Now it's spreading and they're calling it stage four aggressive. I start um, chemo in two Mondays time. I'm totally heartbroken for my babies. So I'm in Northern Ireland. I'm gonna go meet a lady, a girl called Gemma. She's 28, seven years younger than me. She's a mum, she's got three children, five and under, a husband. And I, I don't know, I feel like this sleep sofa is completely different really to anything else we've done up until now because she's terminally ill and she has been told that she has got months, months to live. Far from accepting her fate quietly, Gemma has shared her journey online, attracting thousands of supporters. I actually can't take myself seriously with this bald head. I feel like I'm about to do a drag show in Marmaris. <laughs> you hear about people being told you've got X amount of months to get your affairs in order. Some people feel really terrified and others are, right, we're going to go for this, we're going to fight this, like, remarkably optimistic. I want to find out how this brave young mum and those closest to her have come to terms with the most devastating news imaginable. Gemma and her husband Clive live with their three children in a small, tight-knit community near the town of Oma in County Tyrone. I feel really fortunate that she's so on board and so up for it, like, this weekend, because... Like, we don't know how many weekends, realistically, she's, she's got left. I said that house. The kids in the window. Hi. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm spot on. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Sadie. This is Sadie. Yeah. I'm Stacy. Well, great. <laughs> this is Betty. He's telling you. And this is Louie. Hello, Louie. I've been so excited. No, likewise. <laughs> I'm so excited. I can't wait for, for the weekend. <laughs> nice to meet you, Clive. How's things? Oh. Good. Right. Let me shut this. <sighs> right, show me what's what. Let's hey. go to my room. Let's go to your room. Brilliant. OK, let's go. Yes, Sadie, look at this. To all the kids, this is their room. And this is our wee family room. Look, we spend most of the time in here, so we do. And this is our kitchen. Oh. This is Buttons and Bows. Well, hello. <laughs> so talk me through this weekend. So my followers on Instagram have been asking to meet me for a long time. So we have decided to do an exclusive event for 120 followers. And we're raising money for two charities who have helped us this year just with so much. Sunday? We're going to go for a Sunday lunch lovely, lovely, to our lovely. local. Lovely. Yes, perfect. So you'll love it. <laughs> so what are we doing tomorrow, Clive? How are we celebrating your birthday? I don't know. I haven't been let into any plans yet. I'm taking you out for dinner. Am I coming to the dinner? Yes, you no. are. No! He's getting a date with Stacey Dooley Clive, for his 41st birthday. <laughs> Tomorrow, I also am meeting a few friends for coffee, so you're very welcome to join us. What a lovely weekend. I just like to be busy, and that's the way I am. I spend a lot of time in bed this year, um, so I make the most of the days that I'm not in bed. How are you feeling about the fact that we're here? Because I recognise your time is so precious. Mm. Why was it appealing for you? I suppose I just wanted to let other people see that you can just live a normal life. It's about living with cancer. Mm -hmm. Although I'm terminal, I don't class myself as dying of cancer. And that it's not all doom and gloom. I'll go up first and turn on the lights so you can follow me up. <laughs> oh, this feels like such a treat. Yeah, you're going to love it. <laughs> Technically, the family home is a two-bedroom bungalow. But lucky for me, there's an attic. I've lucked out. 
I've never had my own penthouse before, but here we are. <laughs> Brilliant. Stacey, we have something for you. Thank you. But it's just to make you comfortable while you're here this weekend. I've got my own fancy slippers <laughs> for the weekend. <laughs> Sadie, look. Always flashy, never trashy. Do you love them? I'm going to go and get my case. I told one of them boys to carry that up. You're all right. It's not really heavy. Oh, it's perfect, actually. Oh, my goodness. Isn't they lovely? Just such a nice family. The kids are, like, total sweethearts, really confident. I get the impression Clive's sort of quite chilled. And then Gemma's just so impressive. When you're making a documentary about somebody who is terminally ill, you have these preconceived ideas of who's going to be stood at the door waiting for you. She's so beautiful and she appears to look so healthy. It did catch me off guard. I am flawed that she's so ill and she's still so active. Gemma and Clive had only been together for 16 months before their first showed signs of a problem. It all began in 2016 when I was six weeks pregnant with Sadie, our eldest. I took a very bad pain in my left side. The pain was horrendous, I was passing out. So we went to the GP the next morning and he thought I was having an atopic pregnancy, so sent me straight to emergency. And they told me, oh, the baby's fine, but you've got a fibroid on your ovary. What happened then was they decided we need to take you in. We had a keyhole surgery, it's gonna be fine. So I was 17 weeks pregnant at this stage and very poorly. So we went in, had the surgery at 17 weeks and I woke up and it wasn't keyhole surgery. <laughs> it was right up the middle of my tummy. First thing I said to the consultant was, is it cancer? She goes to me, of course you don't have cancer, you're 21, you don't have ovarian cancer. So she took it out, it wasn't cancer in her opinion. I'm the type of person, put it behind you, move on. Believe it or not, I actually went back to work after five, six weeks. Everything was going great. And I went for my routine checkup. And I walked in on my own and there was a Macmillan book on the desk and had my hospital sticker on the corner. But I looked at the table and I was like, I knew it. I knew it, ovarian cancer. It was so low grade, stage one. It had to be regarded cancer, that's how low a grade it was. Nothing to worry about, put it behind you, move on. So four and a half years went by, and in that four and a half years, I went on to have Louis, and I also got married. It wasn't until I found the tumor um, the night of Clive's birthday. I was 36 weeks pregnant with Betty. You'll have to forgive my ignorance. Yeah. How, did you, how did you find it? You could, you could feel so, <laughs> it? So, it was in my vagina. Oh, so, so you, could you could feel it? Um, Something felt different? Yes. The words that stand out to me were, it's incurable, it's aggressive, and it's acting unusually. We can't fix this. There's no fix, there's no cure. How did you tell Clive? I think I was screaming down the phone in the middle of the hospital. And I was like, can you just come and get me? That's what I, I just said, come and get me. Um, I said, just come and get me and bring me home. How do you begin to try and process that? It's incurable, oh, there's nothing we can do. It was really hard because I was trying to don't panic, guys. I'm going to sort this out. I'm going to get this sorted. I'm going to fix this. And did you truly believe that? Mm -hmm. You've, you felt like... Yeah. I still do think that I can sort this out. I, I don't think I'm ever going to be uh, no evidence of disease, but I think I can prolong it and live with it a very long time. He's obsessed with hand sanitizer. Oh, can this I is what happens it? when you have a child in lockdown. Perfect. Hand stand before bed. Following the new diagnosis of stage four ovarian cancer nearly a year ago, Gemma underwent a 12-week course of chemotherapy. But the treatment failed to stop the cancer spreading. They have stopped my chemotherapy treatment and 
I have been told basically to get my affairs in order. Gemma, look at your hair! <laughs> I know I always take my wig off because it... I don't want the food smell on it. It's beautiful, sure. Oh. Everybody says that, but Honestly. I just... I, I don't go out like, with it like this at all. Very rarely. Just around the house. Would you have one or two? Uh, one, please. Thank you. You're so welcome. What a spread. Louis thought nothing of the hair because he, he got his very first haircut the day that I got my head shaved. So it was normal for him. Because I didn't go bald overnight. I had very thin hair. And then because it was falling out so fast, like the hardest part for me was hoovering it up constantly. So we decided to shave it. I'm very lucky that it's grew back so thick. So the kids know nothing? No, I wouldn't say that. Um, Sadie definitely knows more than she would let on. And it's very much like... Oh, my mum's got cancer, my mum's a sick mum. She would quite easily turn around to me and say, well, are you going to die? Like she started to think, obviously, a wee brain's taking everything on. She's not just coasting along, she's sitting in the background thinking about what's going on. She knows there's something. But it's hard and you're trying to explain, obviously, well, she's now five, what's going on. Are you shocked at how well Gemma appears to be doing? You know, I've always said that... I don't see their diagnosis. I don't. I've been. I've been with Gemma. I know how she is, how she feels, how she gets on. They don't know what they're dealing with. So for them to put six to fifteen months prognosis is. They were a bit early to do that. She was like, "It's time to get your affairs in order. It's reasonable to expect a year." It's, it doesn't matter. Sure, you're doing your own thing. They don't know. Mm. And you're defying it. Your stubbornness is one in. <laughs> We have became closer and we do have everything going for us. Like, our life is so happy. And then there's just this dark cloud that we just need to get rid of. I'm not asking to be a granny. I'm just asking to be mummy. It's not that I want to grow old and live forever. I just want more. Prolong this. Just shout if you need me. Nice to see you soon. Hey. I'm trying to imagine being sat in a chair in a doctor's room and somebody telling me, Stacey, you've got a year to live, months to live. I'd have a breakdown. Because to me, dying is the most frightening thing in the world. And I think it's because I'm having such a lovely time. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I just feel like I've got such a lovely little life. I think, fuck, I don't want it to end. It's my second day sleeping over with Gemma and her family. <laughs> There's no conventional cure for Gemma's rare form of ovarian cancer. The terminal diagnosis has led her to take a more holistic approach. So, Gemma, talk me through what you're making. I'm preparing a coffee enema. Wow. I'll hold the liquid inside. So it's like a colon, like a cleanse, a colon cleanse. Yeah. Up your ass. Yeah. And you've got your heart now? Yeah. I call it my healing house. A healing house. Am I right to have a look? Yeah, let's go. Oh, it's impressive, isn't it? It's beautiful. It's a bit more than a garden shed. Desperate to try every option, Gemma has raised enough money for treatments her doctors have explained will not help her. So this machine is still in clinical trial and they can't say it's going to cure cancer. You said it's still in trial, so it's not sort of scientifically proven, but you're thinking, why wouldn't I give this a go? Of course. Why wouldn't I try? Talk me through how this all came about, because you had a fund me page, did you? Yeah, so when we got home, I had to text my friend to tell her, and she goes, Gemma, I'm going to set you up a GoFundMe page. 
And I was like, no, you're not. I was like, we'll take a loan out, we'll remortgage the house, we'll do this, we'll do that. And she's like, Gemma, what bank's going to give you a loan? Clive said, we're not doing it. And he was saying, no, Gemma, we're going to get the money some other way. And I says, I'm about to ask for help. <laughs> so I pressed publish on the GoFundMe. Within like 45 minutes, there was nine grand. And I was lying in my bed, crying and crying and crying. Clive came home at like nine o'clock. I could see that he was cross. He just looked at me and says, well, what's it doing? What's all that pinging? And I says, that's followers. They're going up in hundreds and thousands. That whole day, it didn't stop. All the local influencers and bloggers were sharing my page. So it was like all over YouTube, all the local radio stations, newspapers. It just went across the country. Before I went to bed that night, it was over 90,000. And then I was like waking up in the middle of the night and it was like 110,000. So it was just mad. It warms my heart that people are still thinking we're rooting for you, Gemma. Well, that's it's it. a little token of I'm still praying for you, I'm still thinking of you. And They're invested. Yes. The surprisingly generous public response allowed Gemma and her family to visit a controversial clinic in Mexico six months ago. Good morning. The clinic claims to improve cancer survivability, promoting equipment unrecognised by orthodox medicine. Why do you think sometimes there's an air of scepticism? People aren't happy to entertain the idea of the like, holistic yeah. approach. So I suppose I would have been sceptical, but I was willing to try anything. What I do know is I wouldn't be investing up to two, three hours a day doing these things if I didn't feel that it was benefiting me. They always say, don't they, when bad news has been delivered, people tend to rally round and actually you see the good in really shitty situations. And I think that's exactly what this illustrates. Total randoms, like complete strangers, have been moved. I don't think she's saying, oh, this is going to fix me, but she's just trying to snatch a bit more time. She wants to be around for as long as possible so that the kids remember her when she does, when she does go. Even just speaking about death or dying is something I struggle with. Keeping dark thoughts at bay must be a daily battle for Gemma. If you ask for Gemma's opinion on something, she will not sugarcoat it. You could, you could be in the worst position ever. <laughs> She'll still tell you what the truth yeah. is. Fortunately, she has a loyal group of fellow mums to help provide vital support and humour. It's something that you often hear, I think, when someone's really poorly is the pals or the family members don't know what to say. I think for me, he, when we meet, the reason we're friends was never anything to do with cancer. So when we meet, there might be a slight conversation about it, but really... Like an update usually? Yeah, and then it's, it's, a, over. it's a small update. And then we yeah. talk about everything that normal girls in their 20s talk about. We talk about the children and... We move on. We move on to from life. it. Because yeah. yeah. we always have so much to catch up on. Yeah. Is Owen doing this yet or... That way Monkey started doing this. Has, have you got that stage yet? It's like always like... Playground chat. Yeah, honest to God. And then it's like our single mums, we get like the lowdown on the latest boyfriends and things like that. It's just a bit of crack. You know, your illness is obviously a massive part of your life, but it's not, it's not it doesn't entirely me. who you are. Yeah, you don't have time for cancer. No. Yeah. You were a character and a half before cancer. Yeah. <laughs> like, she needs nothing else going on. <laughs> and you're a midwife, aren't you, Emma? Yes, I am, yeah. Because well, you called Emma when you were poorly. Yeah. yeah, so it was this night last year. Yeah. I text Emma. Oh my God, it makes me really emotional. I don't know why. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, uh, I think it was just because you'd been through the cancer before when you were pregnant with Sadie, and I think when you messaged me, like this kind of thing went through me where I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know how to tell her that it's, it's not normal. I think you can kind of separate yourself when you don't know somebody, whereas when it's a friend, like it. It does hit a nerve a wee bit. But you're such a brave woman and you've like 
raised awareness, you've helped other charities, you just don't think about yourself and yeah, you're an amazing mother to your babies. Is it hard for you ladies because you were all pregnant together? Yeah, it's mad. I know what you mean, I was actually discussing this last night with my boyfriend, like... The reason I think I get so emotional about Gemma's story is because I have my own son and if I was, if I was just a single woman with no children, it probably wouldn't resonate as much, but when you have children, you're constantly thinking about them and I know that's at the forefront of your mind when you're battling, it's because there's babies that you don't want to leave, so I think that's why a lot of your following is... Mummies. Women, mummies, yeah, they, they can relate to you and, yeah. I suppose from very early on in this, I have said to a few of them, you know, to always make sure that they continue to always be buddies mm -hmm. and, like, always to remember to invite Louie to the birthday parties and to continue that group. Because, like, you know, daddies, they you know, daddies it. don't remember these things. <laughs> and I've always said to these girls, you know, always keep Clive right with the birthday parties and always remember to, just because I'm not part of the group anymore, if that day comes, always remember to invite my kids. It's frustrating and it angers me because it's like, I, it's not what I wanted and it's not what I planned. They need me and that's it. I've probably got two or three solid friends that I can call up and go, ah, everything's awful and it's all falling apart. I think Gemma's really lucky that she's got girls that she can talk to. I love that she's got that support network in place. Girls, lovely to meet you. I can't wait for tomorrow. Yeah. Cheers. 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 You know, losing a friend is heartbreaking, isn't it? And they are going to... They are going to experience that. OK, so who can blow out the most candles? Whoa! You are so good at this. Living with a terminal illness has made mum of three, Gemma, determined to appreciate each day as it comes. Happy birthday, dear daddy. Happy birthday to you. Oh. <laughs> Clive's birthday is particularly poignant as it was a year to the day that Gemma discovered the tumour. You look a vision. And you look so handsome, Clive. He scrubs up good. Yeah. Well, thank you. I don't know what way to take that. I'm accompanying them for a quick celebratory drink before giving them some couple time. How long have you two been together? We first went out in February 15, but we actually didn't kiss or nothing to April. Two? Tell me about the first kiss. He told me that loads of ones from work were going, and I'm like the only girl, and we got. So drunk. And then you've been together, what, ever since? Yeah. That's seven years. And yeah. And still totally in love. Yeah, we're seven years now in May. And I always say, it's so easy to walk away or to throw in the towel when shit gets bad. Because we live in a very disposable world. I've seen that my whole life. Divorce is so normal. And did you fancy him straight away? No. No, so it took a while. But you fancied Gemma straight away. Be honest. I thought she was loud. I am loud. Yeah. I have been in relationships in the past, you know, where they kick you under the table to quiet you, whereas he's like, you look fantastic. You know, I'm so lucky, and you've never tried to quiet me, haven't you not? I wouldn't win the battle. <laughs> That's what I've loved about him from very early on. What do you love about Gemma? You know, she is what you see. There's no hidden agenda with Gemma. It's out there, like, it's not always about Gemma. She does put so many people in front of her. That's what I love about Java. I always say I wish I'd met him sooner to love him longer. That's what I always say. I'm going to leave you to it. <laughs> I am mindful that these birthdays are super precious and they don't know how many they've got left together. The fact that they're even both still having a laugh and still good spirited is testament to how resilient they are.
It's Saturday morning. And later today, Gemma will be the main attraction at a fundraising event with her many supporters. But this morning, Gemma hasn't been feeling well. What's that patch on your back? Is that your medicine? That's my morphine. A small thing. Yeah, so Clive changes that every Thursday for me. So this is the cupboard I keep all my medication, my pain management, and then my supplements and alternative therapies. So you're taking medication every day? Yeah, nobody even notices me doing it. And now you're in much less pain? Much less pain. So the tumours on my bones appear dead, but my bones are so badly damaged, you see? So I will always rely on pain management. You were sick this morning? Very sick this morning. You yeah. were sick yesterday? Yeah, but yesterday passed a lot quicker than this morning, yeah. Oh, it's a miracle I ain't slipped over yet. Clive used to work full-time at a car dealership, but he's recently started taking over some of Gemma's domestic duties. So we're off to go and collect the kids, Sadie and little Louie. Is this a new thing since Gemma became unwell? No, this is all new. I was always at work, away to work before Gemma. I worked late. And I suppose, you know, when things are really difficult, you have to try and recognise the positives and you've been able to hang out with the kids a lot more this oh, year. Oh, definitely, yeah. I've seen a lot more of their development. Their wee personalities come along. We're both at home now, so we miss nothing. That's the big plus for me. I get the impression that Clive doesn't easily share his feelings. But he's agreed to give it a go. Have you got someone to talk to when you feel a bit shit and a bit knackered and a bit emotional? I've never really been a talker. This I just... is your idea of absolute hell, isn't it, Clive? Oh, no, no, it's definitely <laughs> up there. Um... Are you happy to talk me through how it felt when you found out how ill Gemma was? You're a bit numb at the start. When you sit back and you look at Gemma, you don't see somebody who's supposedly this ill and... It just, it just doesn't add up. And then to watch her go through treatments, through chemo, which was horrific, you know, and that was the first session, and that was a realisation, right, this is real. I mean, this is the woman that you love more than anything else in the world. Yeah. How, how do you receive that information? So I would say I was probably in denial, but I wasn't. I, I looked at the fact, well, you don't look ill. You don't have, yes, you have these things in your body, Let's see how we can deal with it. Let's see, we'll, we'll do anything, we'll try everything. We have still three kids. We have a newborn in the house. We have to keep going and we find an answer and that's, you know, with a problem. Let's find a solution now, how we do it. Do you think about what your life is going to look like when Gemma's not here? I've had moments, but I don't go there unless Gemma brings it up. We have had discussions and I saw her cut her off and said, Jam, we're not there. You don't need to worry about that. You're going to be here to help me for a while yet. I don't know how long. I can't say. Nobody says, but we're still here. You are a brilliant dad. I think they're really lucky to have you. Thank you. We played and we went outside. In the cold? No, we had our coats on. Yeah. At this afternoon's fundraiser, Gemma's supporters will be expecting to see the upbeat and glamorous mum they've come to love. Hiya. Hello. Gemma's friend has offered to help her shine. Just do your thing, the usual, full glam. During her chemo treatment, Gemma had to go through the trauma of losing her hair, something she decided to share with her followers. You're quite honest, aren't you, online about losing your hair, how that makes you feel? Yeah, I'm very open about it. I have constantly posted my images from the day I started losing my hair because so many people are interested in it. So there's my wee page, you can have a look through. I'm not saying this to be polite. Doesn't she look pretty? She looks pretty oh, amazing. bold. Amazing. You're so striking looking. That is the worst one out of them all. 
What did Clive say? Clive was the most supportive. I bet, I bet uh, he was. Do you know what that man did every night? He would like massage on cancer oil. And he was like, you're still so beautiful. You're still you, you're so beautiful. Did you worry about feeling sexy? <laughs> At the start, it was very like, you know, jokey. Like my mom and sisters bought me like a box of wigs. So I had like 16 wigs in a week. And then we started naming them all. Do you remember the blonde one, Taylor? Yeah. That's my stripper wife. That's it, I'm going to with Taylor. Yeah. Every name that I came up with, he was like giving me a different role. <laughs> How important is it to look glamorous when you've got cancer? When I look good, I feel good. And I think that's been a lot of help to my mental state mm. on my bad days. So I haven't seen the collection of wigs. I like this one. I wear this one today. With Gemma's charity event starting in under an hour. Us girls have got just enough time to get ready. I, look, I, look. <gasps> I think you're beautiful. No, I'm not. I look like a poor man's Gemma. You know, no one's been out, have they, for however many months? So everyone's really gone to town. The girls are going in a limo. Yes. Sorry, Gem. I'm coming right now. May. We're on the road, me and my sister-in-laws and Clivo. We're having a wee champagne in the back of the limo and I'm so excited to meet you all. See you soon. As well as funding to allow Gemma to continue her alternative treatments, the event will raise money for the Cancer Fund for Children and Claire's Wish, granting wishes for the terminally ill. Hey! It will also give some of Gemma's 28,000 followers the chance to finally meet her in the flesh. The tickets, ranging from 60 to 100 pounds, sold out within an hour of going on sale. It's an intriguing reminder of the pulling power of social media. Hello, my name is Kathy. I'm going to be your host for today. Who wants to say hello to the gorgeous girl herself? Let's have you, Jen! I'm just wondering how you're feeling that today is actually happening. I feel it feels like more glamorous than my wedding. <laughs> Some of the attendees have been affected by serious illness themselves. I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer about 10 weeks before I came across Gemma's GoFundMe page, so um, yeah, it really hit me. Tell me how important that online community is. I would never have been a big social media fan or anything before, but it's hard for people who aren't going through the same thing to understand. And, you know, she really did pull me through some of the darkest days. Um, so when I seen Gemma walk in earlier, I was at the bar and I felt like I could have burst into tears. Um, yeah, I just felt so emotional. Gemma's sister Amy is one of the few guests who's been on the dance floor with Gemma before. At the start I used to get really upset and cry and then I realised that that's not Gemma. She doesn't get upset and cry, she's so strong. That's what's so hard because you forget that actually she is very sick and you know she is living with cancer and eventually she will die of cancer. I have enjoyed every minute of today. I didn't know what to expect coming into a room with over 100 strangers, um, but now we really are friends because we've all met. So I'm so grateful for you all to come here today. <laughs> and I thought this was going to be a one-off and my husband's going to kill me if he's listening. But we need to do this again. Yeah. Anyway, we have Clyde. He's my last one I want to thank. Love you all so much, and I hope you all had a brilliant day.
dancing done, the main fundraising can begin, with a raffle and auction being streamed online to thousands of Gemma's followers. When we arrived today, it was at 25 grand. We're now over 27 grand. And like Clive said to me, Gemma, this is probably going to go to 30 grand by the end of tonight. It's just been amazing. I'm overwhelmed by the support and I'm overwhelmed by, you know, how much we help each other every day. Breakfast, okay? Okay. Morning, Clive. Oh. What a vision. Morning. Every morning he's not sexy. Lucky me. Lucky you. It's my last day staying with Gemma and her family. And we're all aching a little from yesterday's knees up. So when you hear this one, this is a lady who has been so, so kind to me this year. Oh my goodness, Gemma, I'm sure you're on an absolute high. People didn't know each other and everyone felt like they knew each other. It was just the most empowering day. I swear to God, there's not one thing could have been any better. Stacey, I live in the most supportive town. Our whole country has come together. It's just cancer affects every family. So I think that's why I've got the support I have. Ready. To give me a proper send-off, Gemma and Clive have booked a table at their favourite restaurant. Firstly, Gemma wants to show me some very personal diaries she's been writing for the children. So this sweet part is just where I do all my writing. So you know, this is where you'd write to the kids? This is where I write to my kids. I have a book each for them. Each of them have one. When I do this, it brings me into a bad place. Like, there was one stage I went four months and didn't write one letter. And then I started thinking, you need to write those letters, Gemma, while you're well, while you're good. Someone said very early on to me, and she's also terminal. Someone could go out tomorrow and get killed in a car accident. We have something special. We know that our days are numbered. So we are grateful and we cherish what we have left. And we have time to prepare. I think like we'll keep the, the words private for the yeah. kids, but are you happy to talk me through what's in there generally? Yeah, so... Um, So if I was like having a really good day, I tell them all about that day. <laughs> or like their birthday parties or Christmas. Or if I'm having a really bad day, I'll tell them about that too. Um, I just talk to them like they're there in front of me. I'm talking like right now. I don't talk like it's in the future. Sometimes I'm reading it back to myself thinking this doesn't make any sense because they're going to be reading it in the future and I'm talking to them right now. They were gifted to me. I don't think I was, like, uh, was prepared to... I didn't think I was going to do that. <laughs> have you got one for Clive? So, I do have a little notebook in the house for him because I'm constantly writing things down, like things not to forget. I've got something else I can show you in here. Mm -hmm. But I've started buying future gifts whenever I'm not here. It's unlikely that I'm going to be there to walk them down the aisle or maybe 21st birthdays, like far away birthdays. So I'm trying to like prepare for, for future things. I will show you. Each of them got something blue for their wedding day. I couldn't leave Louis out. So he got little cufflinks with his initials and a little blue sapphire for his daddy to give him on his wedding day. And then these are for the girls. So, that one's Betty's. And that one's for Sadie. But I just want them to know that on their wedding day that I thought about them and that I'm... Yeah. It's like, I just think it's something special. She started writing books for the babies, for her children, and for a man, for Clive. You can imagine 
what's in there. And she's trying to be sort of pragmatic and organised because she never wants them to forget her or the time that they've had together. Don't ask me any more questions. Hi. Hi. How are you? One, one high chair, please. Thank you. Thank you. Dinner with babies is hard. We like to wreck the table, chew on everything, shred some napkins. I knew it was going to be an emotional weekend. You come in to meet a family, a young family, and their mother's terminally ill. I hadn't anticipated how well we would get on, so it makes it an even more bit of pill to swallow. Well, listen, I have had the loveliest weekend. Thank you so much, Jen, for saying yes. You're so welcome. We've just loved having you. I can't believe we're going home. I'm a bit sad. And whilst Gemma has been dealt, the shittiest news. She's also had really brilliant moments and she's so loved. That's what I'm saying, it's unconditional love and so many people will never experience that, truly. And I think she sees that. We'll come back next weekend, yeah? Uh, we're, we're out of the country <laughs> next weekend. We are going to Lapland to visit Why Santa. Are you? Oh my goodness. Is that daddy? We're going on a husky dog sleigh ride in the snow. You're going to see the huskies. Every single day is a gift and let me hang out with my Clive and my babies and make sure they never forget me. Stay in touch. Look after yourself. I will. You too. It's been such a pleasure, haven't you? Honestly, Likewise. thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. See you at home. Bye. 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 Big Bye. week. Bye, baby. Bye. Bye. Happy man there. Look at that happy man. <laughs> Woohoo!